So I'm now going to hand over to you. But Pear's got a unique view of the business uh, aviation market. Good afternoon. Uh, you should say good afternoon after lunch. I recognize everyone is looking to go to lunch. Uh, what we will be covering over the next 15 minutes, and I want to make sure that there is room for questions, is uh, our view of the business aviation industry, our perspective as one of the players and one of the partners to the industry, and the focus on why we feel that technology is what's really going to drive change and opportunity over the next decade. Avenod started, the embryo of Avenod was the very light yet in year 2000. We were at business school and Avenod is actually my master thesis project. Our idea was to buy 100 Eclipse aircraft, build a technology platform to operate, sell, schedule, everything needed in order to run air taxi operation in Europe. Our capital need for the first business plan was sort of north of 100 million dollars. You have to realize this is before the dot-com bubble, and everything is looking very, very positive. Our professor, of course, within two weeks said, you can't build a business that's reliant on third-party delivering aircraft that are to come out in the next two to three years. So please, start looking at something that has an immediate need. So that's what we did, and that's where Avnod came to be. So of course, I do feel I've been in the industry long enough to draw some parallels to what I hear right now about the EVITOS. <laughs> And trust me, I think innovation is exciting. We had the uh, very light there were two manufacturers, and both of them went out of business. I mean, Cessna came out with the Mustang. We heard yesterday about some of the challenges in trying to get the hours a year really needed in order to run an air tax operation. <laughs> Luckily for Evitals, there is a lot of people play, uh, playing in the field. And if you ever tried Blade in New York, or Room in Mexico City, or Sao Paulo, you instantly recognize that there is a huge opportunity in this space. If you get the regulations right, the aircraft designs right, if you get the costs down. And I thought it was very interesting to hear about all the perspectives from yesterday and today. The energy distribution one was an eye-opener. So let's talk about business aviation and how we've seen it evolved over the last couple of years. Because it has accelerated. In the past, you needed to own an aircraft in order to get on it. Then came the fractionals with NetJets in the late 1990s. Early 2000, you had the jet cards that allowed you to pay $250,000 or $100,000 in advance and get the guaranteed rate, guaranteed availability. Over the last couple of years, there's been an extremely innovative period of new business models. You have the country club of the sky where you pay a membership, year, uh, a membership fee a year that gives you access to the jet card pricing and the seat sharing. I'm based in the US, and of course, you hear a lot about seat sharing and, and the innovation that goes on. There are a lot of people that have tried different business models. Some have failed. Some are, are still going, and I think the jury's out on how viable these plans are. But it's clear that over the last three to five years, we have seen more of a change brought by business models, not new business aircraft designs. And it's technology that's powering a lot of it. We should also realize that we have a different way of how people are selling charter, floating fleets. Again, technology and distribution is powering that. Our industry, as Anna said, is a cottage industry. It's a very small industry. We have 1,300 operators and brokers that are members of the Avenue Marketplace around the world, of possibly 1,400, 1,500 as a potential market. Most of them are extremely small. I can count on less than two hands the companies that are doing more than $100 million in, in brokering revenues or operates more than 30 aircraft. There is some consolidation, but it's going very, very slow. What we instead see is vertical integration. Operators are starting up brokering companies, and brokers are buying operators. So it's definitely a convergence of the two. You see uh, Apollo bought Talon Air, Directional Aviation expanding their offering with, with Private Fly. Yeah, you have Exo and Vista yet to see us a couple of the recent examples. But this industry is extremely siloed. It's very competitive. And that mentality about sharing data and, and, and cooperation on things that are not 
uh, it doesn't really exist. The strange thing is that when you talk to pilots, and I saw an email just the, the other day where, where pilots were saying, I'm going to fly into Costa Esmeralda in Nicaragua. Can anyone give me any tips? And within five minutes, someone says, yeah, you need to turn off your ground proximity because they haven't installed X, Y, and C. And by the way, you should stay at the tree house because it has a nice access to the uh, beach. So further down in the industry, there's cooperation uh, happening, but not on a higher level. And what's that a problem? We are such a small industry that creating and accessing data that we can transact on or that we can automate on or that we can drive efficiency off is very hard. That there isn't a single data source that allows you to know the opening hours of an airport is amazing. That people feel that collecting that information within their own scheduling system is a competitive advantage is sad. Because the lack of these inefficiencies, these tools, means that, that we are, are not working as efficiently as we can. Efficiency is needed for us to be more profitable as an industry that allows us to invest in new things that allow us to grow even more. Where do people spend their technology money? Yesterday, Adam was asked on a 1 to 10 scale, where is the industry on technology? And he said less than 1. There are people out there that say, well, I've get, I'm subscribing to Avinode. I will let Avinode's tech team of 45 developers handle it. But that's not the right answer. When I talk about technology spend, I don't talk about what the cost of giving iPads to the pilots or the other IT infrastructure necessary. I'm talking about the critical system that people invest in in order to schedule, operate, sell, market, and drive their businesses. And that level of appetite of investment is very low. So the challenge is, if you're not spending money, how do, we how do we expand the industry? I don't say that everyone needs to have a tech team, but from 1,300 members, the number of CTOs or CIOs that we interacted on a semi-regular basis is less than 20. Without a CIO or CTO within the companies, the whole technology perspective is lost. I'm not saying you should all sell online, being an operator or a broker, but technology in your service delivery is key to drive efficiencies, to drive growth. We need to have more of a collaborative environment. Collaboration means I win, you win. It's not I win, you lose. It needs to be collaboration that's focused on innovation, not just copying the same thing, fighting for the same revenue piece. But also attended San Francisco and Revolutionero. I gave a long presentation about the challenges of Uber for private jets. The owners, the customization, the way to pay. And I just want to clarify, yes, do I believe it is possible to do an Uber for private jets? Yes, it is. And what I mean is that when the consumer clicks book, that it actually at the end of the day gets scheduled in the operator's scheduling system, not the running behind the scenes, trying to appear like you booked online. Of course, it's going to be for the simple trips, which I agree with, with uh, Patrick from Lea, that, or London, uh, like Salvation, sorry, uh, that the human interaction is incredibly important. But it's not technology that's just going to drive these efficiencies. There needs to be a change of, mind shift, uh, a change of mindset within operators, brokers, and the consumer. I think that's the biggest challenge we have. It can't be that when I call an operator five times and talk to five different uh, people, I get five different quotes for the same itinerary the same day. Or brokers that are trying to constantly play around and, and uh, keep the client less informed. The Avenue Network, the power does not just sit in the technology. It actually sits in our interaction as an industry. On a monthly basis, there's about 600,000 charter requests sent through the system. We have 3,500 aircraft on the platform. We've been around for about 10, 15 years in the US, 18 years in, in, in uh, Europe. When you hear people saying that they have access to 20,000 aircraft, I would like to point out that the aircraft that are actually professionally run, being used by 
the professional wholesale buyers is less than a thousand. Expand a little bit outside of Europe, and then you are uh, 3,500 uh, outside of Europe and the U US, you get to about 4,500. We have 7,000 users that use Avenue on a daily basis. And every month, there are about 150,000 apps calling uh, our uh, database for search results. We are powering many, if not all, of the serious B2C ventures out there, either completely or supplementing their offering with our data. It's this network that brings power to Avenode. But we are very focused on enabling innovation. API, for those who were corporate yet investors, you heard Noel talk about the, the importance of API. We don't see that you need necessarily need to be in Avenode in order to access the power of the network. We believe in an open architecture with APIs where you combine and you bring new value to the industry. The win-win for you, we, and the consumer. And what's exciting today is, is, is uh, I'm actually for the first time in a long, long time being able to announce some new product development that we have done. All our product development is driven in co uh, conversation with our customers, listening to their pain points. So something that uh, we are launched last Wednesday, it's now in pilot with the 30 biggest operators in Europe and the US, with NetJets and some of the larger buyers. It's called Takeoff Ready. And I will have someone else explain what Takeoff Ready is. It's a teaser that's coming out. Hello, Cam Artisan with Avenard here. We are visiting with Embraer in Melbourne, Florida, getting ready for shooting our Takeoff Ready promotion video. For those who don't know what Takeoff Ready is, it's the Amazon Prime, but for air charter, really making it so much easier to find an available aircraft with crew assigned and the owner isn't flying. So, looking forward for you to try out our Takeoff Ready product. Stay tuned for more. So why I'm excited about Takeoff Ready and, and the analogy with Amazon Prime, it's really because it tackles three main problems that the industry faces today. Owners not letting the operators know when they are flying and not flying. There's pilot shortages. Even if the aircraft is sitting fully functional, the owner isn't flying, is there really pilot assigned? And then of course, the aircraft being out of maintenance and fully functional. So Takeoff Ready is focused on trips that are to depart in the next 96 hours. And more than 40% of all the searches in Avenode are for trips to, in this time frame. Takeoff Ready is really our first major step to get to the booking. Avenode's founding vision was that it should be as easy to book a private jet as commercial airline ticket. And we've been going at it now for, for 15 plus years. But this is where we start saying that we are taking a big step forward Decoupling how operators are actually scheduling the fleet to versus how they want to sell. So that we get closer to that one step booking. But it's not easy. Avenode uh, group consists today of Avenode, Skedero, the fleet operation software, and Paynode. Paynode uh, is our PayPal but for business aviation that we launched about two years ago. The challenge of this industry, you heard it yesterday in one of the panels, it's low volume, it's about five to 600,000 flights a year worldwide. High amount for each transaction, average 22,600, with 30 to 40% of the transactions happening within the next 72 hours, and usually with three parties. Payment is blocking uh, efficiencies, preventing people from doing business, flying trips they really want to have. So, so we are very much involved in the payment space. It hasn't been easy. It's fintech, it's technology coming together. But we believe that at the end, it will bring huge value to the industry. Me talking about technology is not enough. This isn't the Per Martinson show. Technology is not the Avenod show. It's really the responsibility of the entire industry. Because if we are not investing together, if we're not moving together, we are too fragmented to go at it alone. 
So our challenge is really back to everyone who's part of the network, who wants to be part of the network, to access our APIs, to uh, get in the collaborative spirit, so that we are really unlocking the true potential of business aviation. And with that, I would like to open up for any questions that anyone might have. Great, it's great to have a, a nice announcement as well. So, uh, does anyone want to do an old fashioned question first or comment in the room? Okay. Um, duh, there's a lot of questions asking you about collaboration. Uh, does Avanode collaborate with other systems like Charterpad? Patrick's question. So, so we have a strong belief that our customers are driving the direction we are set, sitting, uh, setting. And that we're looking to uh, create collaboration, create APIs, wherever there are mutual benefits for everyone involved. And if a customer comes to us and says, I need you to integrate with company X, Y, or C, we are very open to do that. That's how we have done it in the past. We are today integrated with 30 different scheduling software, both from the big major ones, as well as smaller ones, and in some cases, softwares that have been written by operators or brokers themselves. So, so we have no principle of there being certain people that we don't integrate with. What's important is our members are coming and saying that they really value it and they want it. The question you always get asked um, about uh, why doesn't Avanode become a B2C company? Why do you only act? For those people who don't know it, Avanode only links at the moment between, unless you're about to announce something, between brokers and operators. And, uh, and, and to respond to you at the moment, uh, it's a question I have had for the last 18 years. Why don't you disintermediate the broker and just open up Avanode to the end consumer? In those cases, people don't understand the value that the broker brings to the uh, equation. Representing the client, uh, uh, curating the Avanode search result, figuring out what to, to really is the best option. We also have to be pretty uh, arrogant to believe that we, as a technology company, can all of a sudden compete with the best brokers in the world, in the entire market. So, so we know what our niche is. It's aviation, it's technology, and it's supporting our network. Takeoff Ready is to really drive the wholesale industry forward. Yes, it will enable everyone who uses our APIs to drive the B2C to offer an even better, uh, better product. Takeoff Ready is the first step to get to guaranteed availability that you can transact. But we're doing this to power the B2B environment. Any more old school questions? Okay, so are you including final charter pricing in Takeoff Ready? Is that how it works if I'm booking 96 hours in advance? So there are two parts, uh, or a couple of parts that need to come back in order to transact online or in a marketplace like Avanode, or on Amazon for that matter. You need to be able to describe the product, and in our case, the search result that you see in Avanode is the product, and it's unique every time you search because everything in the background changes, availability, itineraries, pricing, etc. cetera. Takeoff Ready is really focused on availability. Is the aircraft there and available? In a parallel channel of work, we are looking at pricing. How do we better support people to really price the way they want to sell, not how they are scheduled to operate. This has to do about fleeting, uh, floating fleets, minimum usage, we just released a new search engine, a lot of stuff in order to get the price more accurate. We will start showing how reliable pricing is in Avanode. As someone using the system, you would like to know if is this price reliable or how often is it coming down higher or lower. So we are getting to, we are working so that you will have available and priced, which means that you can transact, and then add on pay node so that you can book. Great. Okay. Um, final question. You take off ready still requires operators to input correct data. What's changed? It, nothing has changed. It's actually us assuming 
that operators need to be involved. The information today, was you could go at it and say, how do we extract takeoff ready information? Well, we take the pilot schedule and analyze it. We take the maintenance schedule. We try and get in the head of the owners, et cetera, et cetera, and pull all those data sources together, throw a big algorithm at it, and out we'll get perfect availability. That's not what we're doing. Because I don't believe it can be done that way. Instead, we have 600,000 shutter requests that goes through the system every month. That's 20,000 a day. 40% of those are for trips in the next 96 hours. 86% of the operators are using Avenue to respond to these charter requests. So they are in there every day answering 8,000 requests for the next 96 hours. They are looking in their FOSS, Avianis, or other operation system. They are looking at the pilot schedule, and they know that no, actually want to have more flight hours, so you can call them even if it's time off. They know this, so when they're responding, we are collecting it. So rather than going at this as, as a technology computer algorithm, we are using the network, the traffic, the interaction with our user to curate and create what we view to be unique content. So that's our take of it. So, so yes, we're extremely reliable on the operator, but we are definitely incentivizing them to stand out from the rest by showing when the aircraft is really available. I have one operator who loves it because he has an owner who would like to have more hours, but he doesn't know how to promote those short time frames. Because the owner will say, yeah, on Wednesday I'm not using the aircraft. This will now change the dynamics so they could really tell the owners, we now have a way for standout in the entire charter market if your aircraft is really available. So we, we, instead of pivot, uh, trying to for brute force with technology, we're actually just turning it around and asking our users to participate. Great. Thanks very much, Per. Thank you. So lunch is the same place as yesterday. Um, I'd like to encourage you not